just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. So welcome back to Coffee Time. Coffee Time is a feature that I do that covers various topics or comments or just something that's on my mind, questions I may have gotten, and I uh, try to do them every week or so. Today I'm excited about it. I've got some good topics, things that I'm really interested in and looking forward to telling you about it. Stay with me through these. First one, I just want to talk about subscriptions and growth of the channel. Second one, be a little trip I took to the south side of town. Next, just a phone repair update. And then I'm going to cover some comments and my response to those comments. Fifth, we're going to talk about gift week. And last, I'm going to talk about dating in Armenia. So let's get to it. This week, I was stunned. There's been an amazing growth of the channel. It was like a little explosion. As a matter of fact, this week, as compared to the past three years, just this week was an 11% growth as compared to three years. That's crazy. In, in some days, I was having 800% growth. This week alone, 64 new subscribers. So for big channels, that's, that's nothing. That happens every second. But for little guys like me, that's crazy good. So I want to thank all of you and to all these new viewers, welcome to the channel. So this week I needed to make a little trip to the south side of town. If I wanted to get my repair package for the phone, I had to make a run down there. Now, I've been to the south side a few times. I went down and picked up uh, furniture that I bought. I, but I've never spent much time in the south part of town. And while I know some general areas and certain things like I know where the Coliseum is, I don't know a lot about the barrios, unlike the north where I know a lot. Um, so the south side of town was interesting for me. And I've got some video clips here. In a barrio on the south end of town. Look. And if you look on the there you have all these Christmas paintings that the local barrio neighborhood has done. They're making it their own. There's another street. And I guess they just went for some colors. I have a repair kit. Oh my god, I hope it works. So what do you think? Pizza delivery? shot of the south end of town some nice areas down here now one of the things that was striking is 16 years ago I lived in Pereira for a little while and actually it was Dos, Dos Quebradas which is like a sort of a suburb of Pereira and I lived in this little barrio and what I saw in the south part of Armenia was this traditional kind of barrio with a little bitty street, it's almost a sidewalk, two-story, you'll say they're townhouses, they're upper and lower um, apartments or houses. Most people will own those. The entire barrio is like a family and during holidays people come out and associate with each other. It's a very social environment. So I go out to the south part of town, and as you see in these video clips, it's very clean. You can see the personality to it. You can see the community contributing to it. And the area around it, on the main road where the buses were, there were a lot of interesting little stores. There was a nightclub, uh, quite a few restaurants. There was a gas station. It was a nice little area. Now, one thing I did notice is here in the north, you're always getting this breeze. Uh, even on the hottest day, you, you get this breeze. I'm getting a breeze right now. I love that about here. But on that day that I went down on the south side, it was a warm day, but there was no breeze down there. I will tell you there's a bit of a divide. When, when people ask and you say, you know, where do you live? And I live you know, in the north. I live up by you know, Parque de la Vida. They're like, ooh. Mr. Rich Boy, that kind of thing. There's a, I don't call it a stigma because it's a positive thing, but there's this uh, view that only rich people live on the northern 
half of the city and the poor people live on the southern half. And there's probably some truth to that. Um, all the real, well I won't say all, but almost all the really nice, uh, more expensive areas are in the north. I would say that there are places in the south side of town that would be very nice to live. And the upside is you can get places for half the price. Uh, your utilities are going to be less because you won't be in the higher zone. You're going to be two or three, maybe four, instead of five and six. So it, it could be something to look into. Personally, I love the North. I chose the North because it's an easy walk to everything I could want. The malls are here. I just, I, I just love the access to everything. Now to get down there, I decided I was going to take a bus. So I got on the internet and I looked up the bus routes and it took a while to find them, but I found them, little charts of each, each bus line. And I found that I could take bus 5 and bus 18 that's basically just a block from me and drop me off right where I was going. And so I walked down to the uh, uh, Fundadores because I had something to do there and then I looked for the bus 18. Second bus that came along was bus 18. So I got on it, I asked the dr driver just to confirm that I was going to uh, Villa Claudio, Villa Claudio. And uh, he said, yeah, 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 no problem. So I went and sat down uh, towards the back, that's where you exit. But on the buses, you kind of need to know where you're going. You need to recognize where you're going because if there's nobody out at the stand, the bus driver, he won't stop. But if you see where you're going, you get up, you stand at the exit, you press the little red button, and the bus will stop at the next bus stop. Here they do use the bus stops. There's really no intermediate stops like uh, in, in Ecuador. So you kind of need to know them. And I had never been there, so obviously I didn't know where I was going. So I told the driver, but it was a while. It took a half an hour you know, all told. And I didn't know if he was going to remember. But there were two nice ladies behind me. And so I just turned around in my bad Spanish and I asked, I told them where I was going and asked if they could help me uh, point it out. And they were laughing and asking questions about how long I'd been here and all the usual questions you get from people. They were very nice. They wanted to know how did I like Armenia and how did I like the people. And I told them and they said, yeah, we're so friendly. And, and of course, uh, as we're pulling up to my stop, they, they helped me. But the bus stopped anyway. Nobody was getting on. But the bus stopped, so everybody made sure that I got off at the right stop. So I got out, and the street signs and addresses are very easy to read here. Um, I missed that when I was in Cuenca. I mean, there was no real addresses <laughs> for most places. But here, it, everything has a designation. And so I first walked down the wrong street, but I realized right away that I, I should have been one street over. So I went one street over and uh, found the house just like that and took care of business. So it was a nice trip. It was pretty uneventful. I really enjoyed seeing some new scenery and I look forward to doing some videos at some of the barrios down in that neck of the woods. Now a quick phone update. Yes, I got the repair kit and here's my phone. See how pretty it is? Ooh, but it's dead. But it's got a sealed case. The case is bonded. The black is glass, just like the front. It's glass. It has a metal frame. Somebody uh, said it was titanium, I don't know, but it's a metal frame and a glass back. Bond it in. So how do you get it off without breaking the glass or how do you even get it open? So I went to YouTube and um, watched some videos and they say you can take a pot and boil water and then set it on here. Well, I did that, oh my God, 20 times can't get the budge. You put this little thing on here and you, you pull it up and then you have to put something in there and then you start cutting the bonding. Couldn't get it to come up. It's a hair dryer. So this girl I know, I, I messaged her and I said, do you have a hair dryer? And, uh, well, I don't, but my girlfriend does. So she came over yesterday to bring me the hair dryer and we tried that, but I could tell right away it wasn't gonna be, it, it would be great for hair because it's gentle, but I need something more like a heat gun, something industrial, mechanical.
can't get the damn phone open. Uh, I need that phone. I need that camera. It's really tying my hands. But such is life. Okay, just a couple things to respond to. On a recent video I did, the bits and pieces one, I showed the vegetarian lunch. But I never commented on it. Well, it was just bits and pieces. I really wasn't going to, but yeah, okay. So the plantain thing with the little red bits, it was kind of like a taco. And the bits, they tasted like chorizo. Now, the spices in chorizo are distinct, and so it tasted very much like that. It had similar texture. If you blindfolded me, I would have been, I would have thought I was eating a chorizo taco, and that was really good. Bean soup was quite good. Um, average or a bit over average. It was kind of bland, but it was good. The rice thing that they had with all kinds of bits of whatever, tree bark, I don't know. That was that was not good. It, the rice was dry. It was like eating sawdust. The last thing on the salad, there was this whitish glop on the top. I don't know. I think it was spoiled. I mean, it really didn't taste good. And the person who was treating me to the lunch, my introduction to vegetarian food, he tasted it and said, oh, no, no, it's not right. So I think something went wrong on that last one. So uh, the juice was good, the cookie was good. Overall, I was intrigued. Uh, that little taco thing blew me away. That I would eat any day of the week. So at some point, I'll go back, give it a shot. What I find fascinating though, is that vegetarian restaurants save a lot of food costs because they're not using expensive meats, but they're more expensive than the regular lunches. What, go figure, was it good or no? Overall, I'd say, I'll try it again. Then I did the food clip where I laid out the groceries that I had just bought. It was about $33, $34, right in there. And somebody commented, well, they actually sent me a message and said, don't you eat any vegetables and fruits? There's, there's no vegetables or fruits in there. I mean, the canned peas, that's for something specific. Normally, I don't eat canned uh, vegetables. But, you know, you said there's no vegetables. Well, that's true. When I go to the supermarket, I rarely get the fruits and vegetables there. They're actually a bit of lesser quality because I think a lot of people go to various fruits and vegetable stands and those stands have more turnover. Therefore, what you get is pretty fresh. It's pretty much fresh every day. And in the supermarket, because a lot of people go to those stands, you might find the same things for a few days there. It, you know, it's the same way. I, I just get a better quality, better tasting when I go to the fruit and vegetable stand. And there's one right across the street from the supermarket, which is one block from where I live. And so I, I go there. It was gift week. Now, there was a couple here. They're going to be here for a couple of months. They're from Cuenca. Well, originally from the U.S. But they're living in Cuenca. And we met up and we talked a lot and then we met up again for coffee another day and they brought me a present i was t we were talking about the dollar store here and the dollar store here is pretty fascinating and you can find some crazy deals uh food items like spaghetti and pasta cereal they have in there and it's like really cheap so i mentioned i like fruits fruit loops don't eat a lot of it but they keep forever and I like them actually as a little snack once in a while. I like Fruit Loops. So they brought me from the dollar store, yes I opened it, this bag. Now it's not the brand but they are for generic they are they're identical. There is absolutely no difference. The flavor is exactly the same. This is two almost two and a half pounds and you know cereal, it takes a lot to make a weight. Two and a half, 2.4 pounds, 2.2. Maybe I got it wrong, maybe it's 2.2. But anyway, it's over two pounds. What was I paying in Cuenca when I was there? I didn't buy it very much there because to buy a 300 gram, which is what, 0.7 pounds, something like that, 
a third of what this is. It was about six dollars. So for about eighteen dollars you would spend there to get what you can get here for just over three dollars. Got another gift from a local person, not a gringo. And they watch the videos, but we're friends. Uh, we see each other once in a while. And she brought me this little coffee maker. It's a mocha pot. You can look it up on the internet. Fascinating. I've wondered about these for years. Never got one. They're not very expensive. This one isn't very expensive. It's got a place that you put in the ground coffee, kind of a medium grind. You put the water in here, set that on, and then you tighten that down, and then it comes up through here, and it's basically an espresso. I've used it twice now. Better than the French press. I'm really, really liking it. But I don't have to throw away the French press because the French press you can put in hot milk and move the plunger up and down and it froths. So you put it in your coffee cup. Yes, this is my coffee cup. And you can see here, maybe, hopefully it comes into focus. Cuenca, Hiron, Cuenca, Manizales, and now Armenia. Coffee time, little smiley face. So you put it in there, throw in the milk. Yes, it's a big one. One cup a day. I didn't say it was a small cup. Killer. Cost, I think it was $10, $12, four, maybe $14. Uh, I didn't pry, but I have seen it in the store before, and I don't recall exactly. Not very expensive, similar in price to a, a reasonably decent French press. And, um, Highly recommend it. Very happy with it. Why didn't I try it a long time ago? Last topic is dating in Armenia. It's amazing how much I'm asked about it, about finding a, a mate here, finding a girlfriend, or finding a wife. And almost, not entirely, but almost all the comment comes from guys. You know, they're uh, retired or close to retirement. Maybe they've been through a divorce. The story is kind of kind of typical and they're coming down here and they want to have a new life they don't want to be alone and they've heard that Colombian girls are awesome and I can tell you from my second marriage they absolutely true um, but like anywhere you have to find the right one so I'm asked this all the time and to be perfectly honest it's not something that I really want to talk about in videos at least not in depth but I'm just gonna hit it a little bit today in person recently there's been a couple guys come down i've met a lot of visitors a lot of people passing through recently for lunch or coffee and there's been a few guys down here and i had a very frank explanation of what goes on but you'll never see a video on on that sort of thing it's it wouldn't be comfortable and it's not for public um, i don't think it's for public information but let me cover some highlights here Okay, quick history on myself. Sick for three years, in bed for a little over two years. As soon as I had my miraculous cure, literally it was a miracle, jumped on an airplane, went to Ecuador. My first year in Ecuador is kind of getting my strength back, getting so I can walk again, um, trying to change from being a bowl of gelatin. I've lost about 100 pounds uh, since that day. Second year, I need to kind of get my head straight because I was supposed to die, and it actually, much as I don't want to admit it, it had an effect on me. That's when I moved to Hiron, so I could just be alone, be away from everybody, and it took that time to really kind of put myself back to the person that I am. And so I did that, and then my third year, it was just all coming together. So three years of being sick and then about three years in Ecuador dating was the last thing on my mind and to further complicate it I had to take a medication uh, for those three years that 
dropped your metabolism to zero and kind of drained your testosterone and just it just doesn't put you in a physical state of mind, physical and mental state of mind, that you were really interested in going and dating. So for six years. Now, the longest I ever went in my life without being with somebody is three and a half months in boot camp, and even then I cheated once. So uh, it, was, it would have been a shock to my system, but going through everything I went through, it's like I really wasn't even noticing. But once that all of that was over uh, absolutely you know I don't want to be alone all the time when I go places I like to be with somebody I've got friends but that's not the same thing as as we know so I decided to start looking myself and it began a little bit in Manizales I saw a few people there now don't be shocked things just kind of work out the way they work out I was asked well what are the ages I'm gonna be honest with you from 18 to 42. That's the range of the people that I've met so far. Most of them are in their mid to upper 30s. So where do I meet them? Well, online, on the internet, like most everybody these days, on a couple different things. But I also meet people just on day to day. If I was, for example, I was in a little store, a little, it was a little clothing store with a friend. And the clerk there was, was being very friendly, and so I just started flirting with her, it was all in Spanish, so I don't know how my flirting in Spanish sounded, but uh, we actually ended up exchanging information, having a date, very nice person, a little young and immature as it turned out. She was like, uh, what was her age? I think 26 going on 16 maybe. It was, it was fun. Uh, it was it was entertaining but certainly not something that I was looking for so you can meet people just day to day as long as you're a little outgoing now if you're not a little outgoing and it's slim to none chance in a place like Armenia that they're going to approach you they'll be nice and they'll be pleasant but they're not going to approach you it's kind of not done you, you need an introduction or you need to introduce yourself and have enough humor to break through that awkwardness and honestly I'm okay with that so that's that's a good way to meet people and third is people have actually been introduced uh, the uh, another benefit of having friends and I've made a number of friends here is that uh, you talk and I say well I'm, you know I'm looking for a girlfriend you know I'm I'm on the hunt for a girlfriend and they say oh well, I know somebody it might be good. and so I've met people that way so meeting people for me isn't the problem. For me, it's finding the right person that I really want to spend time with. So at this point, I've seen literally dozens of people. For the most part, we just kind of sit and talk over a coffee. Uh, the majority of them here in Armenia just come up to my apartment and we chat here. Uh, you would think, why is that? Well, because it's in a nice area and there's a security guard here. They know that, so they're comfortable coming here. And of course, it's easy for me. I don't have to go to places around town that I don't know. So, you know, that's the way that's worked out. I've met some very nice people and I've made more friends that way. Um, but be perfectly honest with you, there's only been a couple that I'm interested in possibly seeing again. But I'm kind of, I'm overly particular. Now here you see, you've got a fat old man. And he shouldn't be so picky, right? Well, I can't help who I am. And I want whatever to go on to, to last a while which means it really needs to suit what I'm looking for. So it doesn't just mean that she's young and beautiful and sexy and witty and all of those things. It doesn't, you know, that's, there's more to it than that for me. How it would be for you, that's a whole different story. But it's kind of fascinating. Uh, when I'm done with this, I almost feel like I should write a book but I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I I may put it on a lock site. I don't know. Suggestions. I I don't want this to be public view. We have people. I have viewers from all ages watching it, and uh, it really is an adult conversation.
So that's my coffee time for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, new viewers, thank you. Subscribers, new subscribers, thank you very much. Don't forget, you can contribute to the channel, keep it going. It's supported by Patreon, GoFundMe. Take a look at the information down below. And the last thing I will mention is the consulting thing that I announced a week or so ago. I'm getting a, a lot of emails and I'm actually working to schedule those things out. In the next day or two, I'm going to put the specifics about cost and what I can do for you down in the comments. It'll be all the way at the bottom. So it'll be a little document that I copy and paste all the way at the bottom. And you can take a look at that. Uh, it's not all inclusive. If there's anything you're interested in that you need in particular, let me know. I made sure that the cost is going to be very competitive, uh, actually pretty inexpensive. And it's more likely to save you more than what you're going to be paying. So, you know, take a look at that and consider that. So, thanks again. See you soon.